In this video, we're going to talk about three things with the intraoral camera. Covering it correctly, going slow, smooth, and steady, and getting detailed data. So one really common problem with using an intraoral camera is actually putting the sheath on upside down. There's only one side of the sheath that the camera will shine through and give you a clear image. And a lot of times we'll put it on backwards. And then we wonder why our images are blurry. So when we look at the pack and the camera, it slides in this direction. And so on a different background, this direction, it does not slide in this direction. And we will show you a couple of examples of what it looks like when you have your sheath on backwards. So here's what you're going to see if you put your sheath on backwards. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my mouth so that you can see what this looks like. It's fairly obvious. You'll be able to tell the sheath is on backwards. I'm going to quickly turn that around so that you'll be able to see it differently. Turned around, whole new world right there. Another thing that's really important when gathering teledental videos is to go slow and steady and make sure you see every part of every tooth. My hygienist's tip on this, Jing Jing says, use a fulcrum just like you do when you're scaling the teeth or just like we do when we're doing operative work. Make sure that you treat that camera just like it is any other instrument and have really good control over that instrument. When you don't have control, and I'll show you a video of that in a minute, you'll see that it can get kind of lost as to where you are. Another way to prevent getting lost in the video is have your person who's gathering the data tell you where they are, saying things like, we are in the upper right buckle. That's really, really helpful. And a lot of these cameras do capture sound as they're capturing. So make sure that you are, that they are talking with you if you have that capability. You can see in this video, it's way too fast. It's not very steady and it can get a little bit disorienting where you go, well, wait, where are we? You can see in this video, it's much slower, much steadier. It's by no means perfect, but we actually can orient ourselves and we can see where we are. Now, if this was a real teledental video, I would be having my staff say we're in the upper right facial or the upper right buckle, and that will help even further with orientation. Another common problem that we see when we're taking intraoral photos and intraoral videos is that we don't get everything off the teeth before we take those videos. So we think we have them all cleaned and then we shoot that video and we find some stuff between the teeth. As dentists, we can't see through stuff. Just like in clinic, we can't see through stuff. So the intraoral camera can be a valuable tool to check and make sure that you got everything out when you're cleaning. I'll show you a few examples of when there's still some stuff stuck on the teeth and I don't know what's underneath there because it wasn't removed properly. Another problem that we frequently run into are bubbles. Just like in an in-person exam, you can't see through bubbles. Also in a telehealth exam, you can't see through bubbles. So make sure that you're drying off the teeth properly before you start taking those intraoral photos or intraoral videos. People often ask, what information do we need when we're taking intraoral photos and intraoral videos? And I think that that's a personal choice for each provider. When you're first starting with teledentistry, my recommendation is get everything. Get photos of every surface of every tooth, get videos of every quadrant, get those extraoral photos, capture as much data as you possibly can. And then after you've done it for a little while, decide what it is that you really like to look at and find your own process. My process is I like to watch quadrant videos and I like to see what I can and cannot see in those videos. Now some things in the video, I wanna have something with more definition. The photo is gonna have more definition than the video. And so I like to say, okay, can you go back and get a photo focusing right on this area with a lot of definition in that area? Or maybe it's really difficult to get a video that's you know the patient holding still and getting a good quality shot of the distal, of the distal most molar. So then I'll say, okay, let's go in 
it back there and try and take a whole bunch of photos in that area and see if we can get one that has good resolution that we can really see that area. And so me personally, I like to watch videos. And the reason I like videos is because I have a harder time orienting where are we in the mouth when I'm looking at all these teledental exams. When you look at every tooth and every picture, sometimes my little mind will go, whoa, that's just a whole lot of pictures of teeth all over the screen. And to me, the video makes a more comprehensive whole. But again, everybody has different preferences. Some people prefer photos. I prefer videos with photos of areas that we want more clarity. So that'll be up to you as to what you wanna do when you start practicing teledentistry. The last piece of advice I have with teledentistry is the most important. When it comes to data gathering, it's all about your team. You have to have a good team. You have to have a team that genuinely cares about the patient, that genuinely cares about the quality of data that they're gathering, and a team that really wants to work with you and continually improve. The last part of this video is gonna be some advice from members of my team because they do so much more gathering of data than I do. They probably have much better tips than I do. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Carolina. I want to share five tips that uh, help me when I take in pictures or videos. And taking pictures is difficult and most when we have to do it in a very small cavity, um, like our mouth. And I would like to um, share with you things that really help me to do my job better. The number one is uh, always prepare all your stuff that you need and mostly when you're working alone, you have to have all your equipment very close to you. And that tip number two is um, always when you're gonna uh, perform a task, I ask for permission to the person that you're gonna do. Like, um, and most when we work with, uh, with people like with the special needs and of people that they're not able to, uh, you know, understand completely what we're going to do. It's very important to to explain them step by step what we're going to do or what we're going to perform. Tip number three is uh, be patient. Remember always be patient because working with the people with the special needs is, is a challenge, you know. Uh, we have to practice how to be patient every time, but uh, you're gonna see it later, how easy it is when we uh, be patient. The number four is be consistent. Practice always. The first, maybe the first videos or the first pictures that you're gonna take are not gonna be the best, but as more you practice, better results you're gonna have and then uh, the other thing that I would like to uh, mention is about the uh, uh, focus what you do it as a uh, tip number five focus what you do don't be distracted by others try to close your door and uh, focus what you do and, and remember one thing that I would like to uh, encourage you to do is when you do something like that just try to relax relax because you loosen up your muscles and you're able to you know to work more comfortable I hope these five tips can help you to improve your job and then I wanna tell you there's nothing easy we have to learn sometimes the hard way but if you're uh, gonna do a task and somebody's watching or supervising remember there's nothing impossible everything that we can do and then um, yeah just try to do the best every time and thank you so much for for share those five tips that are helping me and Thank you, bye bye. This helps too, because um, they kind of, their tongue kind of wanders, so it, it's a tongue. Why, well, I just call it a tongue stopper. Um, so it just kind of basically stops the tongue from touching the teeth um, while you brush or 
take a picture or camera in there. So these are the tools that are really handy to, to have at hand. Okay, so basically uh, the tips I have for good picture taking would be um, use two fingers um, if you're by yourself to snap a picture.